This is the Barbecue Central Radio Show, which airs live every Tuesday evening from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Barbecue Central Show is being brought to you by Big Papa Smokers. Big Papa is the one-stop shop for anyone interested in barbecue, featuring a comprehensive selection of all American-made grills, spices, sauces, accessories, and everything that you need to make a world-class pit out of a 55-gallon drum. Visit them at BigPapaSmokers.com. And by the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic pit temperature control devices and pits as well. You can visit them at TheBBQGuru.com. And by Cook Shack, a leader in pellet and electric style cookers. Visit them for specials online at CookShack.com or call them at 800-423-0698. And by Suckle Busters. Suckle Busters products are preferred by competition barbecue cooks. Texas-based, 100% made in the USA. Introduced first products to Barbecue Central over seven years ago. You can get in contact with them at SuckleBusters.com. Like them on their Facebook fan page, Suckle Busters, or visit the TexasBBQForum.com. Check them out and see why Suckle Busters means busting with flavor. And by Butcher Barbecue, makers of injections, sauces and rubs find them online at butcherbbq.com and by green mountain grills a leader in the pellet grill market you can find out more about their cookers by visiting greenmountaingrills.com and by cookingpellets.com a maker of high quality pellets for all of your pellet driven cookers you can visit them at cookingpellets.com or you can find them at amazon.com as well hi this is bobby Rempe from Cleveland, Ohio, and you're listening to Barbecue Central. So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. All right, good evening, and welcome to the Really Big Barbecue Central Show. Yeah, it is the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling. Broadcasting live and direct from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. The barbecue capital of the North Coast. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday. You want to jump in tonight? You know you do. I'm more than happy to have you. It's a phone call, 216-220-0966. You can also email the show, greg at the BBQ, centralshow.com, with two bits of contact info. Anything else you want to find out about the show can be found at the main website, the BBQ, centralshow.com. And here's what's happening. And here's a question that I have. If you are signed up currently for the newsletter, and I've been getting just a few emails over the last couple of weeks saying that they have signed up a week or two or three ago and they have yet to get a newsletter and they have checked the spam and any other ancillary folders that it may or may not have gone into and they're just not getting it at the inbox because typically it's sent between four and five every Tuesday usually four if I remember to do it so if you have gotten it in the past and all of a sudden it has stopped showing up Please let me know so I can let my eye contact support team take a look into that and make sure that all of the floodgates are opened up when the newsletter goes out on Tuesdays around 1600. Here's what's happening on the show tonight coming up at about two minutes, uh, sorry, 12 minutes from now. Last summer, they were on as a sponsor. This summer, they have come back and we are happy to welcome a segment interview with Peter Gabriel of Igra. Not Sledgehammer. No, no. The Peter Gabriel from iGrill. Talk a little bit about the history of the company, the products, upgrades that they've done over the life, all that good stuff. So Peter Gabriel in about 12 minutes. Not the singer. 9.35. If you're a fan of Chopped Grill Masters, you'll be a fan of my next guest at 9.35. Stan Hayes won his opening round. He will... 
roll on to the chopped finals coming up here in two weeks' time, I believe. And then we'll move to the second hour. And in that second hour, we continue with, I believe, our third pit manufacturer in as many weeks. We go to the cabinet style. We go to a guy who introduced me to cabinet style cookers years and years ago. They are still rocking and rolling, make some of the best cabinet smokers out there. Jay Curry from Spice Wine Cookers, Spice Wine Iron Works, is on at 1014. And then we have a open segment at 1035 with lots to get to. Things that you will not believe going on all over the country. Texas, some barbecue meccas. Texas in the news for things that you will not believe. Florida in the news. For something that you will not believe. It will shock the very foundations of your barbecue universe. Probably have you running and hiding thinking, is this going to happen to where I live? Who knows? That will be revealed at 1035. Do me a favor. You're watching the show right now, and I certainly appreciate that. Make your Facebook posts, your tweets, get it out there on the social medias, whatever you use. Let them the show is up and running. The Audible only can be found at the main website, thebbqcentralshow.com. You can get the video at outdoorcookingchannel.com. You can also get video on Roku or some other IP television situations. Go to your app store on those IPTV uh, deals and search for Outdoor Cooking Channel. If they have it, download it. You'll be happy that you did. You can get the reruns of this show, but more importantly, from 9 to 11 every Tuesday, you get the live show right here as it happens on your big screen television. So some people just like hearing it as it was originated in radio form, audio only, which certainly I appreciate more than anybody. Some people like to see the video. We'll do it either way. OutdoorCookingChannel.com, TheBBQCentralShow.com. You can find it in iTunes and the iTunes radio under uh, Talk and Sports, I believe, Barbecue Central Show or Barbecue Central Radio, whatever the hell I call it. So number of ways to consume the show. Don't forget you can get replays of this show through podcast on iTunes. That's a majority of people do it that way. Uh, my YouTube page, which you see scrolling here on the bottom third, you can go to Outdoor Cooking Channel for our replays of the show. So never any reason that you should miss anything on the show ever. And here's the lead story in Competition Barbecue this past weekend. Lots of great winners, lots of great contests, all of that stuff. But the Florida Barbecue Association's Team of the Year contest came to a close and taking it this year in 2015 Matt Barber of Hot Wachulis your 2015 Florida Barbecue Association team of the year securing that title this past weekend with a third place overall had a monster year in both Florida Barbecue Association continues to have a great year in the Kansas City Barbecue Society. So congratulations to Matt. You heard him on this show quite a bit in the first part of the year. And uh, as recently as just a few weeks ago from uh, the last time he won. So uh, well-deserved, hotly contested, of course, uh, through the Buckeye, Jim Elser at Sweet Smoke Q, uh, who finished runner-up. And uh, we'll get through the Florida Barbecue Association uh, 2015 top five results at the top of the second hour. So congratulations again to Matt Barber of Hot Watch Chulos. And did he ever find his scooter? What dick took his scooter at that competition a handful of weeks ago? That's crazy. What kind of a man are you? Or if you're a woman, what kind of woman are you? Stealing a man's scooter. Outrageous. So I have to give a huge thanks to a previous guest about three weeks ago. Ben Lang from Lang Smoker Cooks. Wow. Unbelievable. I don't know if you follow me on the Instagrams and the tweeters, the Facebook, but this past Thursday or a week ago this coming Thursday, a trailer pulled up in front of the Barbecue Central Show compound. Of course, it was highly secured, gated, escorted, and otherwise made sure no shenanigans were going on, and unloaded a 36-inch patio Lang smoker cook. Oh, my. You should have seen the cookers that were on this thing aside from that 36-inch. Holy moly. People were flooding out of their homes, coming over to the compound, 
getting on the trailer, talking the truck driver up on what's it going to take to drop a couple of those off and conveniently forget them. All that good stuff. So I'm in the process of trying to get the time to fire it up the first time. Could be as early as Thursday. I got the wood delivered over the weekend on Sunday evening. It showed up, so I was able to stack that, get it under tarp. Got a great grill cover for the Lang. Uh, The Lang does have a removable stack, at least my model does, which I'm not sure if I like or not, but to be determined. But the fit and finish is spectacular, and I have uh, three videos as I go through the delivery, kind of showing you around it. Then as we start to season it for the first time with the Pam spraying on the inside uh, each and everywhere in the firebox. And then when I actually do the steam clean, which is kind of a Lang trademark, which I had no idea that you did that with Lang. You get on the Lang website, pigroast.com or, or Lang uh, langbbqsmokers.com, pigroast.com, easiest way to go, of course. And part of the process when you are either turning down from a cook or before you get ready to cook from your last cook is you get that thing up to about 300 to 350 degrees, and then you hit it with a, a fine misting of water, and it steam cleans itself. So I have that on tape as well. Very dramatic with the steam pouring out of the unit because it's hot and all that good stuff. So about three Lang videos that'll be coming up at the top of the second hour as we get into that. And and then, of course, we'll move on to the interviews as well. So very excited to have you. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. If you want to get in touch with the show. And we are off and running. We have Peter Gabriel from iGrill coming up out of the break. But first, I want to tell you about CHOPS Power Injector Systems, the National Barbecue Association 2015 Barbecue Tool of the Year. They come in three awesome sizes to fit your injecting needs, from backyard cooks to the caterers, the restaurant chefs, the competition guys. A power injector is right for you. Each of their patent-pending CHOPS Power Injector Systems features not one, not two, but four needles evenly spaced at the perfect distance for even injecting. It also comes with three plug screws so you can use fewer needles or change your spacing to get around the bones. It's called versatility, folks. Now, let me break it down a little and tell you about each one. The number one seller, the half-gallon Chops Power Injector System. I have one. Designed for the competition or to pump up the backyard warrior like me. Easy to use. Clean it, fill it, pump it, and go. If you have just one brisket or pork shoulder to do, you don't need to fill it up all the way. Just put in what you need. It will use it all. It comes with 14-gauge needles, two replacement plastic needle adapters, three plug screws, and a needle protector, $100 plus shipping anywhere. Then you have the one-gallon CHOPS power injector system, designed for the catering, the big jobs, holds double the amount of injection of the half-gallon system. Some use it in competitions like Memphis Barbecue Network for the whole hog, or maybe you're cooking 10 shoulders and you need to get that perfect one. This one also comes with 14-gauge needles, two replacement plastic needles, three plug screws, a needle protector. This is $120 plus shipping anywhere. And then the new one. The CHOPS Full Power Injector System. It's electric. It's commercial and the competition big daddy. It's not a holding tank, but a a three-and-a-half-foot pickup tube that you can put in any size container. That's right. It'll take from a few ounces all the way into a 55-gallon drum. It was designed for Chef Rob at the best barbecue restaurant in Kansas City. He has said time and time again that with the CHOPS Full Power Injector System, his briskets are better than ever. It comes with a metal needle adapter, 14-gauge needles, 12-gauge needles, two 11-and-a-half-gauge needles, three plug screws, and a needle protector. It's 325 bucks plus shipping anywhere. A number of the top pit masters in the world use Chop Power Injector Systems to make their barbecue better than the rest. You should start using it as well. The thing is this, folks. We live in a foodie world that now requires flavor in every bite, and this is how you do it fast and furiously. It's not just for meat either. How about an alcohol-infused watermelon or some other kind of fruit or something else you can stick needles into to inject alcohol in? The CHOPS Power Injector is the tool for you. Every injector is hand-assembled right there in Kansas City, Missouri. They have extra accessories if you want them. If you want to shoot medium ground spice, they have you covered for that. They have two, three, four-inch, 12-gauge needles. They also have two-inch closed-tip needles, perfect for shooting fatty meats to keep them from plugging up with that fat. They sell the replacement stock needle adapters. Everything you want. The CHOPS Power Injector System gives your barbecue power. BarbecueKansasCity.com. That's BarbecueKansasCity.com. The website, let them know that you are hearing about their product on this show. 
specific. Let them know. Maybe you get an extra deal. Chops Power Injector System. Happy to have them aboard. BarbecueKansasCity.com. Go to my homepage. Click on their logo. They'll send you right over there. You'll be happy that you did. Peter Gabriel from iGrill, the newest sponsor of the show, right after this. Stick around. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, we're back. This portion of the Barbecue Central Show is being brought to you by Sam's Club National Barbecue Tour. That's right, still going strong. 31 cities, half a mil in cash to be won. Next stop on the tour is this Saturday, August 1st. August 1st? What? Des Moines, Iowa. Local qualifier that feeds the top six teams in the Madison-Wisconsin regional final that will take place the week after that, August 8th. To find out more about the Sam's Club Barbecue Series, check results, or to register your team to compete, you can still do that. Visit kcbs.us slash samstour. All right, joining me now, a sponsor from last year, coming back on board again this year. We love devices. What's the one thing that I know about barbecue people? Once we have the pit set, once we have the cooker targeted, bought, and on deck, the next thing that we have to do is fill out the accoutrements like crazy. My next guest has got a product that you definitely want to get your hands on, if at all possible. We welcome Peter Gabriel from iGrill. Peter, how are you, buddy? Good, how are you? Doing absolutely fabulous, Peter. Appreciate you uh, making time for the show. I suppose it's uh, really easy to go for the Peter Gabriel joke. Do you hear, like, every day something about Peter Gabriel and the singer and you and all that stuff? Yes, I do. Pretty much every day. You, but, th- you know, it never gets old. You ever thought about just changing your name to, like, Peter Smith? Never, actually. Never? It's a great icebreaker. Never. <laughs> it's a great icebreaker. So I'll uh, I'll. I'll stick with it that's right it's like a sledgehammer there you go i did it i did it uh peter is the sales manager over at i devices inc by the way the website if you want to check it out here while we're chatting up is letter i devices inc inc i devices inc.com and you can check out all the products over there uh i guess peter for the folks that maybe weren't around last summer when we were uh, running together uh, a little background uh, maybe on you and kind of how the history of iGrill has evolved since its inception. Sure. So uh, I've been with iDevices for about four years now. Um, iDevices started with our CEO, Chris Allen. Uh, came up with the idea of a Bluetooth-connected um, grilling thermometer and, uh, you know, was took the plunge and kind of went ahead and did it himself, brought it to market in a couple of months. Um, wow. Since then, we've come out with uh, several versions of the cooking thermometers. Um, Basically, Bluetooth-connected grilling thermometer. You leave the probe inside your meat. Uh, It's going to plug right into a device uh, on the outside of the grill. It's going to wirelessly transmit your temperature back to your phone, or you're going to be able to monitor it real time and as well set a temperature for whatever food you're cooking so it alerts you when it's perfectly cooked. Peter Gabriel joining me here on the show talking about the iGrill products. iDevicesInc.com is the website to check it out. By the way, uh, special for the Central Lights, if you order something, go to the promo code, enter Central for 15% off your order. So, of course, uh, myself and the Central Lights appreciate the discount, Peter, that the guys are passing on over at iDevices, Inc. on the iGrill stuff. Why Bluetooth? There's a number of other, I I don't know if they're competing products, but uh, wireless situations that you put one at the cooker and you have something either on the inside or maybe it pairs with your phone or whatever, but why did you guys go after the Bluetooth technology versus some type of like a radio frequency transmission or CB situation or something like that? Sure. So number one is Bluetooth connects right to your phone. It's a device-to-device connection. Um, Everybody's got their phone with them these days. They're never away from it. You can never, you know, be more than three feet away from your phone. So Bluetooth was the perfect solution for us. Um, it's not a big power suck in terms of the battery. So we've got great battery life on our new products. Um, the iGrill, iGrill 2, you're going to get close to 150 plus hours there on cooking time. Um, so that was a real uh, intrigue to us was, you know, 
really going after using your phone with this product rather than having to carry around a, a key fob or some sort of receiver as well as your phone. You know, that was the idea around the original iGrow with Chris Allen was, you know, walking around with a receiver for a an RF uh, grilling thermometer and decided, you know what, I have my phone with me all the time throughout the day. Why can't I have a grilling thermometer that connects to it? So Bluetooth is the best option in terms of power suck as well. Um, you do see some Wi-Fi options out there, but you'd have to have your grilling thermometer plugged into a outlet throughout your entire cook or else you would, you know, lose your battery in the middle of your cook and ruin your food. Peter Gabriel joining me here on the show. Is that a is that an avenue? Because uh, I do have a, another, uh, I guess, the, the longest-running sponsor of my show is the, the Barbecue Guru. Certainly not the same kind of products, but they have taken advantage of Wi-Fi technology to a certain degree. So it is on the phone, uh, and if you hook it up right, which I guess if you're not technically inclined, it could be a little bit of a cluster. But if you get it done, you could go to the store, you could take a jet to California, you know, what have you. It's a little outlandish, I know, but... The, the possibility is there. Is that something that you guys either developing over time or just something that you looked at and said, yeah, great concept, but as you just mentioned, it's going to be a battery sucker. It's just not going to perform to the standard that we want it, so we're just going to reserve at that point. No, I mean, we've, you know, great products, but we've also, you know, we've explored some options in that uh, realm as well, whether it's a uh, remote connection into a um, iPad or something that's at your house already, connected to your Bluetooth thermometer or possibly looking down the line in, in years to come at developing a Wi-Fi option as well. Um, our, our biggest thing is giving the best customer experience. And currently with the Wi-Fi chips that you see out there and the power stuff that they use, it wouldn't give the best user experience for, for our customers and, and at least what iDevices believes would be the best customer experience. So we're sticking away from it for now. Not to say that there's an, there's going to be something down the line that's got Wi-Fi capability. In regards to total products portfolio offerings, what are you guys currently selling onto the market right now? So we have our four main cooking thermometers. We have two grilling versions, two cooking versions, depending on where you see most of your cooking done, whether it's the kitchen or outside on the grill. Um, same functionality. What we offer is a different look and a different feel for um, kind of the environment that you're cooking in. So kitchen thermometer is a little more prettier for your kitchen, looks nice next to your high-end appliances, um, whereas the iGrill products are more rugged and uh, a little more manly, to be honest. Um, the iGrill products as well, uh, our big one, the iGrill 2, offers up to four probe capability. So you can actually track four different pieces of meat that you're cooking on your grill um, kind of make sure that everybody's steak is cooked perfectly to their liking um, rather than just kind of guessing, oh, this one's done, and I assume the other three are done. So we have the four grilling products. We have a bunch of different gift sets that we sell on our website as well. Um, so we're packaging some sauce that we've uh, created with our barbecue team, Smoke and Hogs, as well as their smoking book that they have out on the market and some great value adds with uh, additional probes for ambient temperature and additional meat probes as well. Yeah, I was just going to ask, uh, when, you ha- the four, when you have the four probe capability, do you have the option of pulling one of those out and leaving it as a, a temperature right, or a, a temperature alert to what's happening within the cooker and then having three inside the meat, or there's a, a completely separate probe to do that then is what I'm taking? Right, so what we do is, the iGrill 2 comes packaged with two probes, so two meat probes. And what you're able to do is uh, finalize your purchase based on what you need. So we sell a air temperature probe and an additional meat probe. So you can go in and decide, okay, I want, um, you know, if you're a big smoker, you're obviously going to want that air temperature probe to track the air temperature of your smoker. So you can purchase that for yourself as well as another meat probe. So you can customize it the way you want it. Um, you know, we see people that use four meat probes. We see people that use three meat probes, meat probes and an ambient probe, um, kind of, you know, fit it to your liking. Who do you use for the probes? Is that something that you guys are developing and taking to market yourself? Or do you contract out with somebody that's a little bit more geared to, to make that stuff and you concentrate on the eye grill stuff? 
those are all done by eye devices. Everything we bring to market, um, aside from the barbecue sauce and the um, the book that we offer on our website and our gift sets, everything is developed in Avon, Connecticut by our eye devices team and brought to market by us. How has the growth of the company met or or perhaps not met expectation when you know you're talking about Chris bringing this whole thing like starting it out uh, in the market? How does he kind of gauge? where you're at, you know, four or five years down the road, uh, present day? Uh, Chris is, um, he's surprised every single day, to be honest with you, as am I. I, I started four years ago and I was the fifth person to start at the company and we're at, um, over 60 employees now with an office on the West coast and on the East coast. Oh. So the growth has been, um, absolutely unbelievable. It's been an exciting ride. It's been, um, an interesting experience to see the company grow from five to 60 and uh, to see where we are now, where, um, you know, back f- four years ago, we were, we were struggling to get into mom and pop shops and now we're carried in home Depot and Lowe's and ACE and true value. So the growth has been absolutely um, unbelievable and it's been a, a really fun ride. So when you start with the company you brought in is the, is the sales a director, or the the guy to drive the sales. I mean, you're really aside from the guy that created it, you're the most important part. And the only reason I say it because I'm a sales guy too. So you know, I always love. I mean, if it's not for us, everybody uh, gets fired and the company goes under. And, and so we're like the most important part. So I'm always interested in hearing, you know, how you go ahead and attack. You know, you're charged with getting this stuff out and creating interest, creating urgency, creating a need. Like, what's your plan to get out there and make? I grill a uh, continued success. Well, first of all, I will say that our developers and our software guys uh, make a pretty easy product to sell. Um, you know, very little issues, a great app, and a, and great hardware to go along with it. So, um, really, the next step is is really showing that the product has had success. We we haven't reached our apex yet in terms of where we can be and the amount of stores we can be in for for being carried. So it's kind of showing those um, who have carried it for the last year and a half uh, that it's been successful for them. It's, um, you know, an area of interest for people now. The Internet of Things is really gaining um, speed and gaining awareness. Um, You know, we were the first app-enabled product that released back in 2010 when Chris started this company. We've learned a lot. We know where to be, where not to be, and we know what people want. Um, and we, that's what we, uh, we really push at iDevices. So, um, we'll, we'll continue to push and, and grow our market in certain areas that we haven't controlled fully. And, um, you know, it's really just getting it in front of people who don't know about iGrill and seeing the benefits once they get it in their hands and actually use it and actually taste the food after it's been cooked, because that's the true test there is once somebody's eaten some food that's been cooked by an iGrill, I guarantee you, you'll never go back to uh, cooking with anything else. Peter, what's a conquest account? You talk about places to grow. Like, what do you think would really put you guys over the over the hump is in terms of growth and, and where you would like to get into? Um, so right now, you know, on the U.S. side, we're we're carried in a lot of a lot of stores that we'd like to be in. Um, we'd like to be carried in more of those stores. Obviously it's not a full rollout, um, at every single store for Lowe's or Home Depot. It's sort of limited doors, but we're working on getting in every single store and really pushing our name there. Um, what our really next step is, is the international market is being able to push for the European and Australian market. Um, you know, we see Australia as an area that, uh, is kind of untapped right now for us. Um, really big in roasting. They love cooking down there. Um, it's just a matter of really growing our brand in those areas and, and pushing our names so that we can expand outside of the U.S. and outside of Canada. But um, in terms of the domestic side, it's really about getting into more doors um, at Lowe's, Home Depot, um, and really pushing our names so that when people walk into the store, they know what they're looking for. They're going to look for an eye girl rather than seeing it on a whim and picking it up. Peter Gabriel joining me here on the show, the uh, sales director for iGrill. The website, iDevicesInc.com, if you want to check it out here while we're chatting for the next few minutes. Uh, enter promo code CENTRAL for 15% off your order if you're going to be doing some ordering tonight, uh, tomorrow, here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, Patrick, let me ask you about 
uh, percentage of sales through the stores versus what you see online? Is it mostly online still? Is it mostly brick and mortar stuff? And and obviously, would you like to see more of a of an even business plan set up to where one is going to dominate over the other? Um, you know, we've seen uh, over the last six months really that the in store purchases have really picked up uh, compared to the online purchases. Um, you know, we're happy with either one as long as people are getting an eye grill in their hand, uh, to be honest with you. Um, the fact that we're seeing people purchase it in store makes us think that um, we're still getting those impulse buys where people see it and think, oh, this is a great Christmas gift or this is a great uh, Father's Day gift. Um, so we're still seeing that, but at the same time, we have plenty of people who call into us and say, hey, where's the closest store that I can go and buy this because I don't want to wait four or five days for shipping for this to get to me. I want to use it this weekend. So, you know, we're, we're happy with either, either one, whether you're buying in a store or on our website, um, as long as you're getting our product in our hand, in your hands and you're using the product, um, you know, we're happy either way. One last question here before I let you go tonight, Peter, and I'm getting it from my instant chat room uh, from Matt asking about the possibility of having some of those probes be waterproof. Uh, evidently, you cook in the rain, and they try and kind of wrap them up in foil. They they get a little steamed and perhaps a little malfunction. Has there been any talk of you know looking to waterproof that kind of stuff? Yes, yes, there there has been talk, and we've been working with um, our engineers on trying to get this uh, you know as watertight as we possibly can on the probes. I can you know, let you know that we're always working on. Um, not only improving the probes that we have, but as well other probes. So, you know, whether it's a deep fryer probe or um, something that can be a little more watertight, um, we are constantly working on those. I don't have a specific uh, date at which those will be ready, but, um, you know, we listen to our customer feedback, and that's our thing is giving customers the best experience they possibly can. So we'll continue to work on those probes and make sure they're as waterproof as they can be. Um, and you may see something coming out in the next uh, 6 to 12 months. And obviously you guys have uh, replacement probes and and what have you if somebody were to need one on the website? Correct, correct. We have replacement probes and, uh, you know, our pro probes, which are the spare probes we sell and the probes that come with the iGrill 2 have a one-year warranty on them. So, um, you know, if they email or call in customer service that we have from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, what we're going to do is we're going to cover your probe and we're going to send you out a new one free of charge. Um, again, customer experience is the most important thing for a company, and that's what we really push. Our customer experience team is the best um, out there. So if you have an issue with your probe, you call in or email to our support team. They'll have a probe sent out to you that same day, and you'll get it to you in a couple of days so you can get up and running again. He's Peter Gabriel, the sales director over at iGrill. Again, the website, the letter I, then devices, then Inc., I-N-C, iDevicesInc.com. And we do have a continually running promotion right now where if you buy an iGrill device, you can enter promo code CENTRAL, get 15% off your order. So, I mean, buy a bunch of stuff, right, Peter? I mean, take advantage of 15%, right? Exactly, exactly. There's a bunch of great stuff on there. Like I said, the gift sets that, uh, that we have up there, you can get sauce that we've licensed from a, uh, a professional barbecue team. We've got books up there for smoking. We've got um, additional barbecue accessories for tool sets and walks and as well our products up there and our spare probes. So buy away, use the code, and use full advantage of it. iDevicesInc.com is the place to go. Peter, appreciate the time tonight. Thanks for jumping back on. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. You have a great night. You got it. There he is, Peter Gabriel. From iDevicesInc.com. Did he say Avon, Connecticut? It was, it's up north there, like New England area. I mean, New England is coming on strong, not only in the competition world, but in the gadget world, too, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. One year warranty on probes. By the way, it appears that the American Dream Barbecue team is also sponsored by iGrill. So, you know, Dave's going to give you the straight dope on if that product is worth your hard-earned money or if you are to potentially uh, divert, but obviously they're good. So 
If you have something that you think is up for warranty, they have a great customer service experience team, as he said. Uh, he has nicknamed them the best in the industry. So, you know, me, I'm a Weber guy. I think their Weber's customer service is great. So if they're anything like Weber or even better, I mean, it's going to be a great experience all the way around. So thanks to iGrill for coming back on board with the show again this summer. Again, it's I, the letter I, Devices, Inc., I-N-C, iDevicesInc.com. Once you have everything loaded up in that checkout cart, you go to the promo code box and put in central. You get fifteen dollars off. I'm sorry, fifteen percent off your entire order. So if you're thinking about you know, only buying one or two things, but you're on the fence about some other ones, put them in now because extra savings because you listen to this show. Use promo code central for fifteen percent off. Look, if you didn't know already, Big Papa Smokers is the one-stop shop for anyone interested in barbecue. The number one dealer of Mac Pellet Grills in the world, Big Papa Smokers features a wide selection of American-made grills and smokers, such as the Old Hickory Ace BP, the Gateway Drum Smoker, even a drum kit that gives you everything you need to make a world-class smoker out of a 55-gallon drum. Big Papa Smokers also made a name for itself in recent years by crafting an award-winning line of championship rubs from flavors like Sweet Money to Happy Ending. Their rubs have had a hand in winning almost every major barbecue competition, including the 2012 and 13 American Royal, the 12 and 14 Jack Daniels, the 13 Kingsford Channels, the 14 Houston Livestock and Rodeo, and last year's King of the Smoke. Don't think BPS can just be pigeonholed into competitive barbecue either. BPS rubs have become so well-known, they've been picked up by a nationwide restaurant chain called BJ's Restaurant and Brew House, with four of the nine BPS rubs featured on the permanent menu and amid glowing reviews, you know BPS rubs are proven to be a great addition to anyone's pantry. Big Papa also banded together with fellow California-based rub company, Simply Marvelous Barbecue, to form what has now become known as the West Coast Offense. Defying conventional wisdom, these two California-based rub makers have cornered the market on competitive barbecue and begun to redefine the flavor profile that competitive coats from across the country have begun to aim for. Big Papa's website also features an online meat locker loaded with top-quality meats from Snake River Farms shipped right to your door. From the American Kobe beef to the caribou to pork and double R ranch meats, Big Papa's meat locker has something for every type of barbecue aficionado. Committed to bring you the very best barbecue flavors on the market. That's why they're carrying Swamp Boy sauce, a fine swine sauce, Granny's barbecue sauce. These are the new kids on the block this barbecue season. Big Papa also created... A unique brand ambassador program called the BPS Elite Team, featuring 15 of the best competition teams in the country working together to promote camaraderie, competition barbecue, and to benefit children's charities across the U.S. Keep in mind, folks, Big Papa's Smokers has been able to do all this with only five years of being in the biz, turning competition barbecue on its head, providing customers with the very best barbecue products, becoming a staple of a nationwide restaurant chain, and benefiting children's charities across the U.S. It's just the beginning. I have no doubt. Just the beginning. BigPapaSmokers.com. BigPapaSmokers.com. That's a BigPapaSmokers.com. And there you go. Here's a letter from John Dawson. Greg, Gmail has deemed your newsletter as hard, uh, hardcore porn. No, I mean spam. I don't even have the not spam option. I have to dig it out of the spam trash can every week. Why is that? Eye contact checks it to be spam. More on this. We're right back. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. All right. Welcome back. This portion of the Barbecue Central Show is being brought to you by Green Mountain Grills, manufacturers of some of the best pellet cookers on the market today. If you're looking for a big cooker, to house a lot of meat. They got one for you. How about a cooker that is like mid-ship? Yeah, they got one there, too. How about a tailgate cooker? You bet. They can also supply you with pellets to fire that cooker as well. It's GreenMountainGrills.com. GreenMountainGrills.com. Jason Baker, the folks out there. Simply awesome folks to be dealing with. I love my Green Mountain Pellet Grill. You can love yours as well. If you just hurry up and get one for crying out loud. 
All right, folks, if you're a fan of Chopped Grill Masters season, this year you will really like my next guest. He won his qualifying round that aired July 21st. That was last week. And we'll move on to the final round, which will air in two weeks' time, August 11th, two weeks-ish time. At 10 p.m. Eastern, you will also find him doing wonderful things with a uh, charity and organization called Operation Barbecue Relief, which he's been on this show for a number of times. Let's welcome back Stan Hayes to the show. Stan, how are you, buddy? I'm doing great, Greg. How are you doing? I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Stan. Appreciate you making time for the show tonight. And uh, lots of things to get into here in this segment. Certainly not the least of which is you dominating three other cooks, as we saw uh, last week on the Chopped Grill Master episode. So, you know, you win that episode. You now move on to the finals, which will be on August 11th, as I just said in the open there. Can you kind of recap your show and kind of how it went down for you from your point of view and perspective? Sure. You know, um, you know, going into this, I, I didn't know who was going to be there, you know, and who I'd be competing against. So it was nice to see Candy Sue there, um, a familiar face uh, early on. Um, the other two chefs, uh, true chefs and in, in, in training and everything, um, great people. Show show has a smack talking a little bit, but that's part of the show. And um, But all around, I mean, uh, uh, some great people that I, I got to compete with, I think. Um, you know, when you went through the different baskets that we had appetizer round hot dogs and hamburger, um, zucchini and, uh, um, you know, as what was the fourth ingredient, I just spaced it off. But as we, we go through, you know, that, I mean, um, you know, 20 minutes is not a lot of time. I can tell you that that that's the fastest, fastest 20 minutes of my life. I mean, I turned around and it seemed like it was over, um, you know, we had screaming hot grills. All of us were were having to deal with grills that were 650 plus degrees uh, and completely full of charcoal. We didn't have a chance. They didn't give us a chance uh, um, before that to manage the fire. So, uh, so you didn't. Um, we you weren't had, even like getting the grills. You weren't the one starting the grills. They were just off and running. No, pi- they had a pyro team that basically. <laughs> I bet you there was. There was probably four chimneys of charcoal and a 26 inch Weber, um, oh. you know, kettle. Wow. And, and it was pretty much all lit. I mean, there was, uh, it was just screaming. And so finding a, finding a, an area to, you know, a cooler area. And that's why I burnt so much bread. I mean, I literally, I would put it down, turn around and come back. And it was, it was, to- you know, it was, it was hockey pucks. Um, and then at the, right at the end of the appetizer round is that everything's get, coming to an end, two minute warning. And, and I reach into uh, the jug there trying to pull out a pair of tongs to pull some stuff off. And I hit the microplane and uh, scrape my knuckle. Oh. And, uh, you know, very, very, uh, you know, they, they talked to us a lot about, Hey man, if you cut yourself or anything, stop until, until the uh, medic looks at it. And, Medic came over, looked at it, and said, "You keep doing what you need to do. I, I, I just need your hand for a minute, you know." And uh, looked at it and actually put a glove on it for me, so I didn't have to stop. So, um, but you know, that that round was, you know, I I don't know that there was a clear that I could say that I clearly won that. I, all I know is I didn't lose that round. Um, and that was like you know, you uh, go, that was hot dogs, hamburgers, like the classic stuff, right? Yeah, and and you know I stuffed the hot dog inside the hamburger, put some, the, the salsa con queso, you know tried to make a stuffed juicy Lucy yep. um, type of a slider. Um, you know uh, the you know one of the things about the show is is I don't know what the judges were saying when I wasn't out there, you know. So uh, um, contrary to I think what people might believe is I don't know any of those things. So at the time it airs, you know, the part that I was watching the most was, all right, what are they saying when I've walked, when I've walked off, you know, what, you know, during that deliberation, you know, what are they talking about? And, and, uh, you know, are they kind, <laughs> are they, you know, just reaming us and, and, you know, listening to that was, uh, uh you know, that was for me the, the biggest part of it, um, in the show. Um, cause I pretty much, you know, I literally forgot some of the basket ingredients that I had, but I pretty much remember, you know, um, everything as it was going, um, replaying it back in my mind. Um, 
the elk, you know, I've cooked elk once before, overcooked the crap out of it, so I knew I had to be very careful with elk. Um, How many other people and, even, like, A, know what elk is, and B, had any experience cooking? I can't even believe you've cooked it once. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, I, 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 I cooked elk one time when I lived in Utah for a short amount of time, and and uh, um, one of my neighbors was a big hunter, and he brought some over one time when we were grilling out and, and cooking out. And so, uh, you know, that was my only experience with it. And that's when I found out, you you know, <laughs> it, it overcooks quickly. Um, you have too many beers and next thing you know, it's, it's shoe leather. Yeah. It's like um, anything though, right? With too many beers. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, you know, the, the, the ironic thing about it is, is the person that hunts it and has it on his menu was the person that was chopped. Maddie, Maddie actually has elk on his menu. And, uh, you know, lives in Jackson Hole, Wyoming and elk hunts every year. So, I mean, <laughs> there's a little, a little irony that he was the one that undercooked his elk, um, to that, to the degree of being raw, um, on the inside. Who, um, who was the first, oh, Candy Sue was the first one to get knocked out like that. First Candy round. Sue was the first one. Right. Maddie's out the um, second round. Then. Maddie's out the second round. So it's, uh, you and Mary, uh, Mary Brent. Yeah. Yeah. Me and MB for, for the dessert round and that. You know, I mean, besides the uh, the uh, sauce that I tried to make that wasn't very successful, trying to do sort of a peanut, you know, sauce to go with the elk, something a little different that I thought would go well with that kind of a game, you know, a little bit of a gaminess. Uh, um, I think my my overall dish was was uh, um, as good, if not better. I mean, they like my they like my elk just as much. Um, I was a little surprised actually, just from the the mannerisms and everything that, that uh, um, Judge Tim Love was actually pulling for me over over Alex, um, you know, in that deliberation part to go um, into the dessert route. So that was out of all the shockers, that was the one because I I didn't get a warm fuzzy from from uh, from Chef Love. You know, I've seen him um, on some of the other barbecue shows. Uh, do they just make him out to be a dick, or is he kind of a dick? I, I no, I, I don't think. I think they make him out to be that way a little bit. I, just like they make Scott Conant to a really. I mean, Scott's got an arrogance to him already. They just exemplify it a lot in the, um, you know, in the show. Um, so do, do they you think take that, that arrogance and run with it. Do you think that makes for a good show? Like, in your opinion, would you rather see? You know, some of that, so you, you mentioned at the top that they kind of talked you up to, to run your mouth a little bit. I mean, if that's something that doesn't come easy to you or it's not something that just feels like it's natural, I mean, is that tough to do? It is. And and if you notice in the show, you won't hear me really smack talk anybody. And I, I told them that. I said, that's not who I am. Um, I believe karma's a bitch, you know, and it will come back to bite you. And, you know, I, you see it time and time again, some of the biggest smack talkers in, in a show. Um, are, you know, end up being the ones that, that fall hardest. And so, um, I just, that's something I, uh, you know, I, I don't do it on the barbecue trail. Um, uh, you know, and, uh, um, so, you know, they, they tried to get me, you know, and, and, and when I say they try to get you, they ask leading questions. They ask you things to, to try to, I won't say incite it, but they, they want to know, Hey, are you, I mean, they ask you flat out, do you smack talk? Do you like to do it? Um, they want, you know, if you're a smack talker, they want that personality to come out, yeah. um, in the show. Stan Hayes joining me here on the show, recapping his time on the uh, chopped grilled masters edition. His show aired last week and, uh, he won that one going to move to the finals, which will air August 11th. So you're in the dessert round. Um, and then yep. you're, you know, ultimately announced the, the winner of that particular round compared to like winning a barbecue competition or, you know, some of the other things that you've accomplished, uh, in outside of barbecue, like where does, you know, where does it rank? Is that like the best thing that's happened so far? Is it, is it pretty good? Like where does that rank? Uh, it, it, it ranks right up there with the first grand championship. If not, the, you know, you know, when you won that first, when you win your first grand, um, I mean that excitement, the exhilaration, um, I would tell you because of how fast you're going and, and that, you know, you're not up against a big field of people, you know, it's, you know, you got a, you got a 50% shot, you know, of being the one that that's going to win. Um, my anxiety was, you know, quite high. 
I mean, it was, it was one of those things that you're going and you're going and you're going. I mean, you're up, you've been up since four 30 in the morning, you know, about the time that they shot that, that was probably somewhere around six o'clock, six, yeah, probably later than that. Cause it was starting to just starting to get a little dark at that time. So, I mean, I, I got back to the hotel at a, at a quarter till midnight. Wow. So huge. So day, right? huge it, day. It, it had to have been closer to seven o'clock, you know, as they were filming that. And, uh, um, because the lights were on uh, as we were coming down to that end of that. Um, so there's, I mean, there's a good, I mean, you know, I was done and there was still two hours of, of uh, um, debrief and, and going over what I cooked. So you, you know, those clips when they're, ta- when I'm talking or the other chefs are talking about what they cooked are all taken at the end. So at the time they're chopped, or at the end of the show, you're reliving your entire day. So the you know the the hours worth of program that we see uh, on the finished product is you know like eighteen hours a day for you guys, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's I mean that's so there's a, a lot of way longer a than a regular barbecue competition. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean it's 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 that kind of a intensity throughout the whole time, and then you have the anxiety too. But there's a lot of things that hit that editing editing room floor, and and uh, you know obviously it's for TV, right? I mean because I I came out of there thinking that I won the elk round pretty handily, and when you watch that, it you know it puts a lot of question. Even I, hell, I started questioning it. Well, geez, what should I have been that confident when I was sitting in the in the room that I was going to the finals? I really thought. When I was sitting in that room, I'm in the finals. You know, I beat both of them in this with elk. And uh, then I watched the show, and I was like, "Geez, it put a little doubt in my mind." Was there anything um, that hit the floor that you were like, "Damn, you know, I wish that would have been in there because that would have been a you know something in your mind that would have told a, a little bit better story or given a better perspective." No, you know, the only thing that I was a little disappointed in is on in the bio shoot, I was wearing some OBR gear. Um, that they had, you know, they had said, yeah, wear it, we're going to shoot it. And then it got edited out. Uh, you know, I was wearing an a- OBR apron and some things. So, um, you know, at least they let me talk about it. Uh, the, the logo got edited out, um, in, in a couple of different places on my shirt and uh, on my, and, uh, um, because there were some, some angles that it should have been seen, but that's all right. I mean, um, just get it, getting that, I don't know, 15, 20 seconds to tell, you know, my elevator speech about OBR to basically the world. Uh, I mean, it gave me, it gave me, you know, stood my hair up on end listening to myself. Um, so, you know, that was, that was the, for me, that was the highlight of, of the first show was getting to tell, you know, I don't know how many, how many people see the show in a given week, but it's, it's, uh, as much exposure as we probably ever have. I mean, I got to imagine I mean, the show is so popular and it's done so many different ways that when it's a chopped original style show, as this one is, there's probably millions of people that are watching it. So to get that kind of exposure about OBR, which I know as being a, you know, a co-founder that you are extremely passionate about and always wanting to, to talk about and, and get the word out and get support for, uh, that had to be uh, certainly a, a big event, as you said. So let's go ahead and you know transit. So you're gonna you make it through. You're gonna be on uh, August 11th for the finale, which we're all looking forward to and, and seeing how that's gonna go. And we don't know who's gonna be up there uh, with you, aside from uh, I believe Sam Sam. Uh, what's his Chris name? Hart. Yeah, Chris Hart. Oh, oh man, I was watching yeah. a re- holy yeah. shit. I was watching a replay. Chris Never Hart. mind. That's right, Chris Hart. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, he's yeah. kind of a good cook, by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. Chris is a, a very good cook. And so we've got Chris Hart and then, you know, here in, in an hour, a little over an hour, we'll know who the third person is, uh, the show, you know, the third episode, uh, you know, airs here about starts airing about 10 minutes tonight. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, um, so at the end of the, the evening, we'll know who number three is. And then, uh, a, a week from today, um, episode four, um, which has, uh, you know, um, some, uh, some really good uh, chefs in in that episode as well. So, you know, Mike Davis, a uh, lot of bull, you know, shows his stuff and everything next week. So, 
Uh, Stan, let me give you a couple minutes to talk about Operation Barbecue Relief, uh, you know, some new things that are coming up or things that are going on, uh, things that you're actively doing right now. Give us the insight on what's happening over there. Sure. You know, this year, uh, similar to last year, has been somewhat slow. And what I mean by slow, I mean, there's been plenty of smaller, um, you know, there's been plenty of tornadoes out there. They just haven't created a, a large um, deployment. So we, we've been deployed several times this year you know, 7,000 meals at, you know, over three to four day periods out in the field. And, and so, um, we've, we've, we've got some things done this year. Um, a lot of what we're doing right now is, is trying to solidify future, you know, and, and looking at, okay, what do we need to do as we're moving into, you know, um, the last part of 2015 and 2016, and even looking at 2017, because we know that there's going to be, you know, um, you know, it's a lot of large numbers at some point in time, something's going to hit, yep. you know, whether it's a large tornado or a hurricane or, you know, God forbid, there's a, there's a large earthquake in the United States, uh, something that, that's, you know, people say is overdue and you start looking at those things. And, and, uh, right now we have a major disaster like that. Um, w- we always seem to get the donations coming in during those large disasters. We're just trying to prepare in advance. And so we're going to be launching a, something called iHeart OBR um, here fairly, fairly soon. Um, that's just trying to get people to sign up for a, a monthly re- recurring uh, donation, you know, sign up for $10 a month. You know, it's easier to do right now than trying to find a hundred, you know, 150, hundred or $120 at the end of the year. Um, to make a, you know, your annual donation or, you know, try to do something. So it's easier to budget. So as we're going into the end, you know, towards the latter part of this year, we want to start talking about that. So we hope to move more people to doing a monthly donation, which helps us also know what's going to come in. Um, so that's going to be one of our big pushes. And, and then, um, you know, the the other part is, is we're we're really looking for some, uh, start looking for more, you know, corporate support, some bigger corporations to come in. Uh, you know, one of the things about growing uh, the way we have over the last few years is, is we have much more expense. You know, you have, we have a warehouse here in Kansas city. Um, we have, you know, we're, we've got, you know, what, 13 trailers now, three trucks. Um, we have, uh, you know, equipment in five different States and, uh, so, you know, the, the insurance needs that we have and the rent and everything, um, just the cost of doing business uh, these days is much greater than it was two years ago. Yep. So we're looking to see if we can find some corporate support that can help pay those fixed costs that we have. Um, so donations that are coming in are, you know, going out and being used to help those needed, you know, when uh, um, we're in the field. Stan Hayes uh, won his round of Chopped Grill Masters Edition. He'll be going to the finals on August 11th, and we'll see who he's going to be going up against here over the next couple weeks. And you can, of course, visit OperationBBQRelief.org. And uh, as soon as you have the information to to roll out on that monthly thing, Stan, just uh, shoot me an email, and uh, we'll talk about it here on the show, of course, and, and get people as, as best we can to uh, to get people to sign up for that. Uh, so always appreciate the time, Stan. Thanks for coming out tonight. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. You got it. There he is. Stan Hayes, if you haven't made donations or you haven't gone out and, and made any like a one-time pledge or if you're not, if you've been thinking, you know, this is a great idea that Stan has as far as getting Operation Barbecue Relief on some type of a recurring situation. I mean, $10 a month, you know, a couple cups of coffee. Can't forego a couple cups of coffee to send that money into a organization that is literally serving thousands of meals over even a couple day span for crying out loud. So something we want to think about, as I said, when Stan has that information, I'll get it to you right here on the show. I'll talk to you now about Suckle Busters, award-winning barbecue rubs, sauces, chili kits, and Texas gunpowder preferred by competition barbecue cooks across the U S how about Suckle Buster's Honey Barbecue Glaze and Finishing Sauce? Based on Suckle Buster's award-winning Honey Barbecue Sauce, this is a thin barbecue glaze. Finishing Sauce made especially for competition ribs and chicken. It's super sweet. Not spicy, but it is super red because they use a special American paprika for the bright red color. 
Here's what you do. Brush it on 5 to 10 minutes of cooking. The last 5 to 10 minutes. It leaves a glossy red sheen on the meat, plus adds an extra layer of sweet flavor. Take your competition ribs and chicken to a whole nother level. Available at barbecue stores and online at sucklebusters.com. Email me right now, greg at the bbqcentralshow.com, and in the subject line put OBR. You can win a free bottle of uh, Sucklebusters Honey Barbecue Glaze and Finishing Sauce. Sucklebusters.com. Sucklebusters.com. Thanks to Dan Arnold and the folks over at Sucklebusters. We'll be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. And this portion of the Barbecue Central Show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all of your pellet-driven cookers. Visit CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase. You can also visit Amazon.com to purchase cooking pellets as well. Not going to void any warranties. Don't worry about that. CookinPellets.com, Amazon.com. Search Cooking Pellets. You can buy them there, both places, one place, both places. It doesn't matter. Thanks to Chris Becker and the folks over at CookinPellets.com for their continued support of the show. And we'll sooner than later talk about pellets as well. Stand by for that. Thanks again to Stan Hayes for joining me in this past segment, talking about his time on the Chopped Grillmaster segment. Also about Operation Barbecue Relief, OperationBBQRelief.org, if you want to help out. All right, we're going to step away, reload for the second hour. We're going to come back with lots of stuff. Stick around. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Radio Networks. Hi, this is Scott Greenia from Fairfax, Vermont, also known as Scotty DQ. And you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. From my heart and from my hand, why don't people understand my intention? Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> you have a great show. I'm a big fan. So what? What? What seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? We ate fifty four wiener. But listen, Laverne, it's shake face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> we have top men working right now. Ooh. Oh. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. That's right, you found the Barbecue Central Show. Oh, there we go. All right. Man, I didn't understand what was going on. My apologies. Uh, winner of the sauce, John Dawson. Email contributor to the show, sometimes guest. He has vowed to do at least three blog posts this year. We talk about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling here. Jump in. 216-220-0966. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. You see that information right there. Still to come on the show tonight, Jerry, uh, Jay Curry. <clears throat> Holy moly. Jay Curry from Spice Wine Cookers. Folks, the 2015 Sam's Club Barbecue Series rolled into Woodbury, Woodbury, Minnesota this past weekend. This was a local event that feeds the Madison, Wisconsin regional final. And the top six teams moving on to that final are, in particular order, taking the Grand Championship. Roland Smoke Barbecue, South Dakota, 682. It's kind of a low score. Of recent scores, that's kind of low. Taking Reserve, J-Star Barbecue. 679. Joe Beeland, former Sam's Club winner nationally. Tippy Canoe Barbecue Crew, Joe Beeland, third. The Smoke and Seas Barbecue is fourth. Iowa Wild Hogs Barbecue, fifth. Six tenths of a point separating them. Wow. 
and rounding out the top six Five Finger Barbecue. Not related to Five Finger Death Punch. Maybe. The next Sam's Club event, as I said last hour, will take place on August 1st in Des Moines, Iowa. That will all That is the last qualifier for the Madison-Wisconsin Regional. So good luck to the teams competing in that. There's no weekly barbecue roundup this week because I wanted to allot time to make sure that I showed my Lang cooker videos. Make sure I got these in the right order. Ready to burn in the Lang 36 patio. Okay, now, so hold on can... a second. Let me start again. All right, folks. First video, getting ready to burn in the Lang 36 patio. Right, that's nice, right? So you can right? see if we look inside here. Little water and travel. Metal here, you don't have direct access from the firebox. You don't see that in a lot of cooking chamber. cookers, see like, the, like the that, that plate. It's not a tuning plate. You can, you can see, see where the opening the is there for the reverse. The end of the tunnel. See that? Which is here. Yeah, see, there it is. And that's where the smoke comes from and then comes around. See the and bottom there, by the way? Out the chimney, which is right here. Now, this particular model. What do you think about this? Give me your thoughts with a right now. Removable chimney. Does, so do, it's do, do people like, like that? Double, double fitted. I don't know if that's a technical term or not. Drops in. Um, honestly, I don't know if I'm going to be too hip on that or not, uh, or if I can get like a welder to just weld it in place because the chances of me yeah, needing well, to have Matt, it down for whatever reason. Matt, are give me zero. a break. How many? Um, <laughs> But Beggars can't be choosers, buddy. You have your knob here to adjust the damper to 45 degrees and then fully open. You have, these are the two uh, main cooking grates here. And then you have a second shelf, uh, which goes into the top slots there. And of course, you got a shot of laying there. Perfect. It's got a great... A ball valve. I'm not catering for draining when I'm we not catering. it and washed it out. And I mean, just overall the fit and finish, but it's brand new, right? Uh, is is great, phenomenal. So I'm getting ready to season it now, and I'll shoot some more video here when we get the uh, fire going and start spraying it down. All right, here we go. All right, so we're back. I have, I don't know if you'll be able to tell or not, uh, but you can kind of see some bubbles there. But I've uh, sprayed get like the complete six, inside. Six pork butts on that thing, the, for sure. The, uh, the Lang, That's both plenty. the uh, main chamber and the fire door here you can see here. And then I have a charcoal fire burning right now. Um, Didn't have any wood. I'm still waiting for my uh, wood guy to show up uh, so I actually have sticks to burn in it. But uh, I can do the burn-in process for sure with lump charcoal. I got a big bag right here, and I'll burn through it as needed tonight. Uh, I'll be back here in a little bit as we do the first steam cleaning on the Lang. The fat sizzling and searing machine from Ben Lang. Thanks to Ben Lang. And it's pigroast.com. The website, 800 4 Six two four six two nine. Let me uh, show that to you right there. Pigroast.com eight hundred four six two four six two nine. If you're interested, and we'll be back for the uh, steam clean portion here in a second. All right, here we go with the steam clean. Um, look at me, I'm ready to go. You couldn't be more excited, I know. Here we go. Hi, we're gonna try the steam clean now. As you can see. The Barbecue has reached over 300 degrees. Ben Lang and the seasoning instructions say to do steam clean, you want to get up to 300 degrees. So you're gonna undo the latches, open, and assume it's gonna be very steamy. Move the car. <laughs> Watch out now. Ooh. Watch out now. Uh -oh. There it is. Okay. Steam clean. 
There you go. It's ready to rock and roll now. Uh, the firebox, uh, the width. Ooh. I don't, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know right off the top of my head. All right. John Dawson does not win the giveaway. However, Matt Boer wins the giveaway. He's wrecking my shop about my cooker. But, come on. He's a suck. Okay. I'm reading something. I apologize. No, I haven't cooked anything on it yet because I don't have any time. That thing was delivered amidst the uh, uh, Bobby, my oldest, Bobby playing her last tournament, softball tournament of the year, uh, Nationals, no less, down in Canton, Ohio, where they finished six overall out of 30-plus teams. Thanks. All right, folks, uh, KCBS Team of the Year standings as it sits right now as of about 3 o'clock this afternoon and sitting atop none other than the American Dream Barbecue Team. It keeps going and going and going. Changes, 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 changes. Clark Crew Barbecue who was first last week, is now second this week. Darren Worth of Iowa Smoky D's is sitting in third place, getting basted is in fourth, and Smoke Me Silly round out the top five. Now we get into the final slots of the 2015 Florida Barbecue Association Team of the Year standings. This is how it sits in the finality of 2015 for Florida. And again, the winner of the Team of the Year contest, Hot Wachulis. Second place, Reserve Grand Team of the Year, Buckeye, Jim Elser, Sweet Smoke Q. Rob Bagby has a great year, finishing third. Good Buddies Barbecue, fourth, and rounding out the top fifth. Blitzkrieg Barbecue. Congratulations to all that uh, took place in the Florida Barbecue Association. So there you go. Um, no, I so yes, A, I have not cooked anything. Uh What's the first cook going to be? Mm. Yeah, I mean it's 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 a true reverse flow. I mean, I have a feeling the the right side of the grill closest to the firebox is probably going to run. I don't know. Maybe I'm being crazy here, but uh, seventy five degrees warmer than the left side uh, out by the reverse chute. But I could be completely off base on that. I'm going to get some oven thermometers and stick them in. On the on the the right and the left side, just to see if there's a, a large variance. Too hot, dog, bastard, dick. Out of the break, Jay Curry from Spice Wine Cookers. Yeah, you know me. I mean, I love it. John Dawson, as for the Lang video, product demo vids are clearly not your forte. It ranks up there with leaving PBC Horseshoe stand in the drum. What? It was just, I was just showing you. That, That was not a product demo. You just wait. Product demos are my forte, bitch. Fast Eddie's by Cook Shack Pellet Grill Smoker, all in one. That's right, 100% stainless steel wood burning pellet fired cook. Direct and indirect heat up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. It's the only pellet grill on the market that uses charbroiler technology. Features electronically controlled temperature to eliminate large heat fluctuations that dry and shrink meat. A pellet grill can barbecue, grill, bake, roast, sear, and smoke. Cookshack has two models of pellet grills. The PG-1000 features a fully insulated double-walled roll hood for superior heat retention, fuel savings, and maximum cooking performance. The PG-500 features a two-way swing lid, pellet drop, and utensil holder. The PG-500 and 1000 have many great features, including the 784 square inches of cooking space, easy side-loading pellet hopper, fully automated wood pellet feed system, stainless steel cooking grate, on the direct zone that produced killer-looking sear marks, nickel-plated grills on the indirect and top racks, 
a drip bucket, a pellet ash drawer, 100% stainless steel construction, a warming drawer, 40 pounds of Cook Shack hickory pellets, plus a 30-day all-you-can-cook money back. If you don't like it, give away, give it, not give it away, but give it back guarantee. It is a versatile pellet cooker that adds full flavor to your recipes, including fajitas, ribs, chicken, steak, dessert sides, and large cuts of meat. It can do it all, including cold smoking, grilling with wood pellets. Penetrates the food with an intense smoky flavor. When you cook with wood pellets, the fuel is consistent. The smoke more flavorful for recipes and how-to videos. Check out Cook Shack's YouTube channel or The Cooking Guy on their website, pelletcooker.com or cookshack.com. You can also call them, alternatively, or in conjunction to all of the other above, 800-423-0698. 800-423-0698. Order today. You'll be happy that you did. Uh, Jay Curry coming up out of the break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. This portion of the Barbecue Central Show is being brought to you by iGrill. That's right. We talked to them last hour, makers of the most advanced Bluetooth grilling thermometers. Monitor the temperature of whatever you're grilling from up to 150 feet away using your iOS and Android device. As I mentioned, uh, 914, use promo code CENTRAL, C-E-N-T-R-A-L, for 15% off your purchase at iDevicesInc.com. Grill with precision, for crying out loud. You'll be happy that you did. All right, I've made it a priority on this show over the last few weeks and months to get pit builders on this show to let you guys know who's out there, what's out there, the options that are available. My next guest basically introduced me to the world of cabinet-style cookers, or whatever you're calling them these days back in the day and he is here to talk about his pits again tonight let's go ahead and head back to the hotline and welcome old friend of the show jay curry from spice wine cookers jay how are you buddy oh pretty good how are you i'm doing absolutely fabulous jay appreciate you making time for the show Uh, obviously it's uh, been a few minutes since the last time we sat down and had a spice wine chat so uh, i guess maybe best thing to do is kind of pull out large picture and Get a little background about you and, you know, how you kind of got into the whole barbecue business. Well, I, you know, I thought I was going to pull up when the last time we spoke, but I got too busy today to do that. But it had to be a a few years ago. Uh, I I would say a few for sure. (laughs) Well, well, I'm still here. (laughs) That's great news. Thank goodness. How, I'm, I'm so, glad that you had me on. Thank yeah, you very much. Yep. Yeah. So um, why don't you go ahead and, and give us a little background about kind of how you got into the, the barbecue business, and uh, and then we'll start getting into the pits and stuff. Okay. Well, long story short, uh, I started building a cooker for myself, and uh, before I had it done, I had two or three people wanting one, and uh, I had it took me about three years to get one for myself at home. <laughs> And uh, we decided to, you know, give it a go, see what happened. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, it just kind of went, you know, got out of control from there. And, uh, you know, we uh, we made a website, which was very early in our, in our careers. And the website looked kind of empty. So I made a few barbecue recipes for sauces and stuff. And now the sauces and spices have taken off. And we have three world championships you know, to, to back us up. So that's where we, that's where we are. Uh, Jay, are, are you like a, a fab guy uh, just by trade or, or by profession or is something you just like to tinker with and you were starting to build a pit? Cause look, I mean, I'm like probably those jerks that came over to you and said, Oh, Jay, you know, you got to build me one too, because I can't build like, there's a lot of things that I can't do. And building a smoker is definitely going to be probably first or second on that list. So if you find somebody that is a able to build one and then B, which was probably your case, or maybe this is a or B reversed something that looks really kick ass. And now I want one too. Uh, is that something that's just in your forte or like, 
you know, how do how do you go about building the pit? Well, I was a uh, restaurant manager for 13 years, so I'm more into food than I than I was into welding. Uh, my I have another company that's uh, Columbia Welding and Machine Company, and uh, we uh, my my great uncle and my dad, you know, a long long time ago, uh, used to do welding and stuff like that. But uh, my brother and I and my other partner uh, bought the business. We don't do welding anymore, but I learned how to weld from my dad and I, w- I was just, you know, welding to build one for myself. And now, uh, it turns out that I'm doing more welding than I wa- ever wanted to do. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when you're building, but, you know, that, go ahead. But you know, it's, it's, it's been one of those things where, you know, it, you know, it's, it, it was something that, uh, when I, when I started welding for myself, uh, more of convenience than anything else, not welding for the public. Jay Curry joining me here on the show from Spice Wine Cooker. SpiceWineIronworks.com is the website if you want to check out some of the products here while we're chatting over the next few minutes. Uh, Jay, in regards to, you know, you're building this pit for yourself and you get some people coming up to you, when do you decide that, as you said, it's kind of getting out of hand and you're, you officially go into the pit building business? Well, uh, we started building quite a few of them, and then uh, my accountant, you know, came and said, "Well, you need to separate the two businesses because it's really getting to the point where you need to, you know, not we we were uh, building under Columbia Welding for I don't know the probably the first two or three years, and then they suggested that well it needs to be split up, and you know that caused its own problems because now you know I've got I've got two businesses and two different sets of books to take care of. I I do all the bookkeeping myself. So, you know, I I wasn't really looking forward to that, but, uh, you know, it's been a really, been a really fun ride and I've learned a lot of stuff along the way. And I kind of, I really, uh, my opinion about, uh, pit building and my philosophy of pit building has really changed since the last time I talked to you. And I'm really comfortable where I am right now. Are you surprised that when you decided that you were going to go into the, the pit building business headlong, uh, are you surprised that it has been able to sustain here over the last many years and that you've seen the success that you had? Do you think it would be, you know, more flash in the pan and, and might die off? Well, you know, and, and, and like I just told you, my, my philosophy has changed since I last talked to you. Uh, everybody and their brothers building pits nowadays. And, uh, I, I, as for example, I had a guy that uh, I just talked to two days ago. He goes, uh, well, how come you don't have more pits out there? You know? And, uh, and I had to tell him, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not out there to build the most pits out there. I'm out there to build the best pit that's out there. And we build them all by hand and there's nothing mass produced about our cooker, our, our cookers. I mean, we, there, there's just three of us that build. We're all the owners, and we take our time. And if it's not right, it doesn't leave the shop. So, you know, and un- un- unfortunately, a lot of people want a, you know, a, a firm due date. I don't give that. I say hey, when it's done, it's done. When it's right, it's done. Do you feel that you've lost some business because you've you've really held to your philosophy and, and decided not to? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, kind of bend around what the uh, impatient public is demanding? Well, you know, if they're in a hurry, then, uh, you know, I've, I've had a couple of people that uh, I have, you know, I, I kind of felt like when they were, you know, talking to me that they were in a hurry. And I, you know, I told them, I said, well, you know, if you need it, you know, you can either have it done right or right now. And if you want it done right now, then then maybe we're not the ones to to be with. And, I have turned down some business because I've had people offer me five hundred dollars to put them to the head of the list, and I'm like, no, you're not any more important than the than the guy that's on first of the list. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that. That's not the way we do business. You know, Jay, back when I kind of first found you and, and we had talked, there was certainly a lot of uh, offset style pits, and uh, as I had mentioned in the open, I was Spice Wine was kind of that first foray, at least for me, into the upright or the cabinet style, the vault style, you know, whatever they're calling them these days. 
Uh, why did you decide to go into that style of cooker than you know some uh, something offset? I'm 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 sorry. What was the question again? Uh, the question was, you know, when when I had first heard about you, I mean, certainly there was a number of offset pit builders that were out there, but I hadn't I hadn't really been uh, introduced to the cabinet style cookers uh, up until I had kind of seen you and, and a few others. So when you're getting into the pit building business, why do you go with a cabinet style versus, you know, trying to build another offset style cooker? Well, you know, um, apples and oranges, it's, it's what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, with the offsets, that's, that's a whole different uh, style of cooking in itself. You know, uh, I can't, I can't imagine. A, I don't think that there is uh, an offset that's totally uh, insulated, like a cabinet style would be. So I'm not really sure, you know how. And the the cabinet style, insulated cabinet style, you know, it's going to be weatherproof, no matter what type of weather. The offsets, if the firebox is out there, it's not insulated. And I don't know, there may be something that's out there insulated. I don't know. I just choose not to do that. Um, a fully insulated cabinet, you know, like ours will cook the same at five below zero as it, as it does at 95 degrees outside. So that's just the type that I chose. You know, it's easy to maintain. Ours are, you know, so well insulated that they're uh, painted with automotive paint. And you can put uh, vinyl graphics on the outside as long as you keep the coat of wax on it, just like your car. So that's the, that's why I chose the the uh, insulated cabinet because it's just one unit. You don't have to fool with the rest of it. You know, that was kind of my next question was kind of detailing out the guts of the cooker and, and kind of what separates you from uh, not only the offset as we were talking about, but maybe some of the other cabinet cookers that are out there on the market today. Well, I think you need to look at the weight. Um, ours are heavier than, than most. And I don't like to, uh, I mean, there's a lot of good cookers out there, and I don't want to say anything bad about anybody else's cookers, and I'm not going to compare mine to theirs. Uh, all I can tell you about is mine. We build them heavy, and we want to make sure that uh, our customers have the cooker for, you know, years to come, as long as they take care of it. I mean, the very first cooker that I've ever built is still out there functional. And, uh, you know, it's been over, you know, 10, 13 years, something like that. So, you know, that, that's my main thing. I want to make my customers happy and have a longevity in their cooker that they can tell, you know, tell folks about, well, mine's, I've had mine for seven, eight years. <laughs> You know, instead of mine rusted out within two or three years. So, and that's kind of where I'm headed. Um, my, uh, I've got a really good distributor in Florida, Jimmy Broad, and he's probably sold, I don't know, 56, 50, 60 cookers for me. And he, he called me a couple of months ago and he goes, Jay, he said, there's you know, two new cooker builders down here in the South. And, you know, they're really undercutting their prices. He said, I don't know what I'm, you know, what, what you want to do. And I'm like, you know, just hang in there. I said, you know, I, I don't care. I'm I'm not going to hit somebody else's price point and uh, and degrade my product just to make, you know, make me competitive with them because, you know, you know their cookers may crap out in two or three years and then they're going to come back and say, I wish I would have bought one of these. You know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, to change anything that I do, I'm going to make the best product that I can. Is that difficult? I mean, when you're when you're re, I mean, not totally relying on a distributor. When you got somebody, you know, like Jimmy, who's out there trying to to move product for you, and you get a call like that, I mean, is that something you really kind of have to wrestle with, or are you so firm on your belief and and the the morals of the company that you don't have any probably telling them, hey, you know, just chill out, we're going to hold off. Uh, these things might crack out, and you know, people are going to be coming back to us in the end. Well, you know, I don't worry about Jimmy too much because that's, you know, it's not his full-time job selling my cookers. He has a, you know, he has a very successful company of his own. You know, he's just, he has a cooker. He was one of the first uh, people to buy one of my cookers and he liked it so much. He said, can I sell a few for you? So it's not his total income, <laughs> you know, 
I, I wouldn't tell that to somebody that uh, that were that was dependent on me to, you know, to you know, sell a cookie for cooker for their livelihood. So you know, he's just a great guy, and you know, I'm not. You know, he understands. You know, it, it's 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 not. You know, trying to sell as many cookers as you can. It's the best cooker you can. Jay, talk to me. We're talking with uh, Jay Curry from Spice Wine Cookers, SpiceWineIronworks.com, the website, if you want to check it out here while we're talking. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the models that you're offering and those basic price points when you get into them. Well, we have three uh, standard uh, stand-up models. One's uh, a small, our small cooker, which is uh, for someone that would be uh, for the home that just does a few things every now and then, uh, doesn't entertain much, want to do a turkey or ham or or you know, a, a butter or a brisket or whatever, you know, occasionally. Every every step that, that we go up in cooker size, it doubles the cooking capacity. The medium one, uh, you could do a contest with if you were, uh, you know, doing the uh, uh, professional, you know, contest. And then the large is uh, some, someone that uh, had a restaurant or, uh, did catering. Um, the most I've ever had on a large cooker is like 26 pork butts at one time. So it's a, it, you know, it's a pretty good cooking capacity. And then we have two trailer models that we build and, uh, the single axle is, the, uh, a large on, uh, a trailer. And then the, uh, double axle is too large. The, the, the capacity of two large on a trailer. And that would be for somebody who, uh, you know, does a lot of catering or, uh, you know, whatever. As far as like uh, price points, do you have entry level points to to get into those, or, you know, is, the, is there a well, lot? Well, you know, there... the, the the small one, the small one goes for two thousand, the medium one goes for three thousand, and the large goes for four thousand. So, you know, as you can, as you can see, the large one's probably the best price per square footage of cooking that you can get. But I've gone all the way up to making cookers. I, I built a cooker for a, a fellow in Los Angeles that gets on TV quite a bit, and his was like $26,000 cooker. Oh. So we built some pretty good size ones. I would imagine probably like anything when it comes to, you know, cookers that are being built that uh, there may, there might be a lot of, you know, special requests or customizations and things like this that are going to, you know, add to that overall price tag. Yeah, it does, and uh, we don't mind doing custom jobs, as you know. And you know, our our only thing is, we won't do anything that's going to compromise the way the cooker cooks, or the way that the design is built for the cooker to cook. You know, we've had a lot of people want rotisserie and and stuff like that. Well, you know, the the more moving parts and stuff that you have, the more difficult it is. If I've got a guy that uh, it's in New York, and his rotisserie breaks down, and it's not a part that I built myself, then I either feel like I've got to replace it or go fix it. <laughs> and and we, we try to keep it simple, and the replacement part's simple, and it's just an easy-to-use cooker that, that, that there should be no problems with. Jay, last question here before I let you go, and I appreciate the time tonight. And we talked about you know, how long it takes to get a cooker. Uh, do you have any type of, like, general lead time at this point? Like, if I was going to call in and, and, and ask for a cooker, you know, where are you at right now? Well, you know, it, it it just depends on, you know, when you call. I've got, you know, things going on all the time. But, uh, you know, I'm building a cooker right now for a fellow in New Jersey that will cook four whole hogs at the same time. Wow. And it's a big project. and. <laughs> Um, and I'm also building, uh, I've got in the wings, a uh, cooker going to England. That'll be our second cooker, cooker in England wow. that we've got to build. And I've got three going to Florida and one going to Kansas city. So we're about six, seven behind. I don't know. You know, I just, we, we take them as they come. You get in line and, and we do the best we can to get them out as quick as quickly as possible. So. He is Jay Curry. You can find him over at SpiceWineIronworks.com. Give him a call if you're interested in the 
uh, cabinet style cookers or you'd like to pick Jay's brain a little bit about making you one as well and uh, you can go from there Jay always appreciate the time man thanks again for coming up all right great thanks you got it there he is Jay Kurt spicewine ironworks.com and as I said, I mean, back in the day, it was all offset all the time. It was close. It was Gator. It was Spits and Pits. It was J.R. Oler and all that good stuff. None of a sudden, it was like Stumps and Jay were the guys coming out of nowhere doing these upright cookers, cabinet-style cookers, whatever you call them now, vault-style cookers. But fully insulated, and, you know, to me it was like, and Jay said the same thing back when I interviewed him years and years ago. You know, if you want to check between me and somebody else doing something similar, check the weight. Check the fact that it's insulated, and as he said, it's going to cook the same way, 50 degrees below zero, as it will be at 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's so well insulated, you put on automobile paint, Vinyl graphics, and if you keep it upright with the wax, it'll just stay right on there. I mean, looks great. I mean, this is, go to the website and check out those cookers, man. They look pretty badass, especially the guys that do have those graphics on them for sure. All right, folks, let me talk to you quickly about the longest running sponsor of the show, Warminster, Pennsylvania's very own barbecue guru. That's right, gang. If you have been thinking about automatic pit temperature control devices for your cookers, stop here. It's the only company that created this technology if you're going to buy from somebody else i question your judgment why would you do that why not buy from somebody that invented this technology i don't know i would i have not familiar with how these little beauties work let me forego the minutia but imagine a product that allows you to set that pit temperature and once set keeps it running at that set temperature all the way through the cook sound too good to be true it's not It's real life. You can take advantage of this technology today. Maybe you're a busy working professional. Perhaps you are constantly on the run with kids. You're doing errands. Quite frankly, you just don't have the time to set around and tend those pit temperatures. The Guru allows you to throw on a pork butt or a brisket or a couple slabs of ribs. You're off to do whatever it is you need to get done. And the Guru maintains that pit temperature you set it at. You can get the CyberQ Wi-Fi. We're talking about Wi-Fi technology previous with Peter Gabriel from iGrill. Barbecue Guru has Wi-Fi technology, whether it be through your own Wi-Fi connection or if you enable the Wi-Fi within the unit itself. You can download the app. You Now you can go ahead and control pit temperatures, monitor pit temperatures right from your phone, your tablet, netbook, laptop. you got an Internet connection and the ability to check, you can do it. If you're in the market for a cooker, look no further than the Onyx Oven. The Onyx Oven has been winning on the competition circuit as well as in backyards all over the country. And if I am not mistaken, Bob Trudnack over on social media has shown the Onyx Oven 2. I'm sure we'll be talking about that shortly. And you know, whether it's the 1 or the 2, it's going to work seamlessly with all of the Guru temperature control devices. Do yourself a favor. Head on over to the Guru and check out all their products. If you have any questions about what to order, call them. 800-288-GURU. They will make sure you're outfitted with exactly what you need to get you right out of the box. 800-288-GURU or thebbqguru.com. The Barbecue Guru is a breakthrough in barbecue technology. All right, open segment coming up. You want to jump in? It's your time. 216-220-0966. Greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. I got things to talk about as well. Things that might blow your very mind. What are they? I'm not going to tell you. But we'll talk about them right after this. More Barbecue Central show on the way. Hang on. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. (laughs) 
Who would have thought this music thing was gonna go this far? I never asked for this. I never asked for this fast living. The women, the whiskey, craziness. This All right, welcome back. Two one six two two zero zero nine six six. Greg at the BBQ Central Show. Oh, cripes. I gotta read them. Just reading something from John Dawson. All right. Uh, if you want to jump in, it's an open segment. More than happy to have you. Thanks to Jay Curry from Spice Wine Cookers for joining me this past segment. As we roll through pit builders week after week after week to let you know what they are up to. Spice Wine Cookers, again, is Jay's product. Spice Wine S-P-I-C-E wine, like the drink, SpiceWineIronworks.com, if you've never heard of them. Hopefully Jay has lent some insight to his particular thing. This portion of the Barbecue Central show is brought to you by Man Great, the newest sponsor. The newest sponsor of the show, Man Great. Made right here in the good old U.S. of A. Restaurants and pros use cast iron for a reason. Even heat conduction. Retention with no hot spots, man grates patented design traps and evaporates oils and fats, resulting in reduced flare ups and perfect sear marks each and every time. Here's a deal for you folks because man grate wants you to take advantage of it right today. Use code BBQCEN at checkout. BBQCEN. For 25% off your purchase at mangrate.com. Grill like a pro with Mangrate. All right, for crying out loud. All right, we go to area code 407. Name and where you're calling from. Yeah, this is uh, Matt with Shamrockin', buddy. Hey, Matt, how are you, buddy? Hey, uh, yeah, I'm kind of confused right now. I'm going go this weekend um, after, like, the third weekend cooking for different people and stuff like this. I don't understand how people think we can cook on any grill we've never seen before and just handle this. I got a buddy who just spent a thousand dollars on a Traeger, yeah. never cooking a pellet grill. He goes, come down and cook my family's uh, barbecue for me. Yeah, but it's a pellet grill, right? I never used a pellet grill before. Just turn it on, dude. You're ready to go. You got but it. What you got I this. For flavor? It, the wood pellets produce the flavor, right? Yeah, but I know what to do with a charcoal and wood mix. No clue how to get that on the pellets. It's, it's, to me, you look at it tantrophy. T- Did you say tantrophy? Hamster. Hamster feet. Yeah, okay, I got you. Sorry. Phone connection. Matt, very easy. I have two, uh, two pellet grills in my backyard. Uh, neither are a Traeger for uh, reasons that I will not get into. However, uh, they all work on a similar philosophy so as you know pellets are simply uh, pressurized and extruded sawdust in uh, various forms now some pellets will uh, come in all flavor wood um, and then you have other manufacturers for instance a barbecuers delight wood pellets who do like uh, two-thirds of oak because oak burns at a higher btu so it, it gives you that fire and then they have one-third flavor wood. So if you have uh, an apple bag of pellets, you have two-thirds oak. One-third of that is uh, the actual flavor wood of apple itself. And, uh, you know, there's benefits to pellet cookers. Uh, a, you're going to go turn that Traeger on, and you're going to set it at the temperature you want. And it's going to provide a nice, clean, burning smoke. Now, I mean, if you're looking for a heavily laden smoke flavor, uh, as uh, Josh Carey even said last week on the show from Yoder Smokers, you're not going to yeah. get a huge smoke flavor unless you're going to try and do like some attempt, you know, turning it on. the. I don't know what the controls look like on your buddy's grill, uh, but if there's like a smoke mode or if you just keep it all the way down at the very bottom, uh, lowest temperature setting, you can probably put a, a decent amount of smoke on it. But in the end... Pellets give a much more mild smoke flavor. So if you're just looking to go and smoke their mouth out, it's not going to happen on that Traeger. And if that's no, what they're looking no, for. So the pellets themselves are mixed, like the actual compressed pellet itself is mixed. I don't actually mix in, like, I don't no, grab one. No, 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 no. The only thing you can use 
in that Traeger or any other pellet grill is food grade wood pellets only. You're not going to mix anything else in that. Now, no, can, no, no. What I'm saying is the actual pellet itself, like I don't mix in, like I don't grab a handful from the apple bag and then a handful from the oak. I just. Yeah, I mean, you can totally do that if you want. A lot of people will, okay. you know, do 50 50 cherry and pecan or apple and cherry or apple and grape or, I mean, you know, whatever you want. You can mix pellets, no problem. Just don't put charcoal in there because you're going to have an issue on the no, feeder, absolutely. of course. Yeah, but it, here's the second thing. Yeah. This guy comes at me and goes, come down here and just smoke for my family. I'm like, dude, I got a, probably a $500 competition basket that comes with me with sauces and rubs and everything. He's like, oh, just come down here and take care of him. I'm like, you don't understand. I have to bring all of this with me. And that's one thing I don't understand. That, that everyone looks at us and goes, oh, it's just barbecue. You can just show up and take care of him. like, you guys are out of your minds. He's gonna <laughs> he's he gonna pay you, right? Uh, actually, it's his house we're gonna get for him, so that's his uh, payment. Uh, so that's uh, one thing. Uh, oh. Tell him he needs to, you know, backhand you with about you know 150 bucks. Yeah, he's he's better be taking me off Friday and Saturday night, but he's giving some of your buddy's stuff. He's giving everything out with you, band barbecue supply, and I'll go ahead and plug nice. some of your other buddies for you with Elcher Butcher's Barbecue and all the other suppliers. Nice, and a great sponsor of your show. He's got a bunch of that stuff coming down with him, and, and he just doesn't realize it. And that's the one thing I hate about this thing is I know how all of us feel. Everyone goes, hey, just show up and barbecue for me. Like, yeah. You're the guys, man. No clue what it takes. You're the barbecue guy, right? Uh, apparently I am. It's uh, like Spider-Man. Our blessing is our curse. Absolutely. Sorry. Hey, appreciate you taking my phone call, man, but I just uh, I really appreciate you explaining this call out for me. Yeah, you got it. There he is. Thanks for calling in, buddy boy. Good luck with that cook. Tell your friend to bone out some cash. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. Hook Matt up. So here's a story. You're not going to believe it. I guarantee you're not going to believe it. Pardon me. This uh, I found on, well, originally came to, I have, I think I've mentioned this before. I have on the Googles a alert that shows up. No, I don't want this to play. I don't want it to play. I don't want it to play. It's going to ruin everything. I have an alert set up from Google to alert me on things that are barbecue related. Okay. And it comes like nine o'clock every morning or, you know, whatever the hell it is. All right. Here's the headline. I swear to God, this is true. Florida County tells resident to keep barbecue smoke in his own yard. What? I'm not kidding. This is Fox News, not Fox Local. Some Fox and Friends News. This is live local late break. There's a viral video that shows a Florida man receiving a warning for allowing the smell of barbecue to waft off of his property onto someone else's yard, making that smoking mad. Okay? Scotty Jordan uploaded a video on July 22nd to Facebook that shows Pinellas County Environmental Specialist Joe Graham issuing a warning to Jordan and a friend for violating the county's air quality law. The video, which has been watched over 4 million times, shows this guy Graham telling Jordan that there's too much smoke emanating from Jordan's commercial-grade grill. Graham explains, I just took three pictures of smoke. I can smell it again right now. You're allowed to have it smell on your property, so that doesn't count. But when I'm on the street and I can smell it, that's when it counts. Uh What? Jordan could be heard laughing in the video as the specialist continues to explain the problem. Is it against the law, one man questioned. Graham proceeds to pull out his handbook and informs the men that neighbors are allowed to call in if they have concerns about barbecue smoke. Pinellas County has a 24-hour hotline for residents to call in an emergency air quality complaint. According to the ordinance, commercial barbecues are not exempt from causing a nuisance odor, If a sufficient number of complaints representing different households are reported and an inspector witnesses the problem, they can issue a warning letter. The two men continue to laugh in disbelief. 
and explain that the other neighbors routinely cook out, but no one appears to be issuing warnings to them. So everyone in the whole world can cook out except me, Jordan, can be heard saying. I mean, again, people do not believe that this is really this is really going on. This dude was approached by an environment. I don't even think Cleveland, Ohio has an air quality environmentalist, okay? We need to be a little bit more concerned in Cleveland about the quality of the lake than the barbecue or than the smoke. Can you imagine my fellow barbecuers? Is this thing on? Is this thing on? My fellow barbecuers, can you imagine for one second, for one second, that you are outdoors firing up your offset pit or firing up your Weber smoky or firing up whatever it is you cook up, right? And some guy, some environmental specialist of air quality comes around the backyard and says, hey, I was standing in the street and I could smell your barbecue. And then proceeds to tell you, you could be cited for that. I mean, how are you supposed to control that? What's next? If I can't contain my smoke from not leaving my backyard, if I have no way of encapsulating and putting a basically uh, you, tantamount to putting a bubble over my entire property, cutting off anything leaving my property and leaching into the neighbor's yard on either direction or behind me or across the street. What kind of neighbor is a complaint about some guy cooking outdoors? Some douche. That's who. Oh, my Lord. I mean, this is insane. This is, this is in Florida, by the way. I don't know if it's necessarily a barbecue mech, but I mean, if it's happening in Florida, it can happen anywhere. And it's happening in Austin, Texas as well. Patrick Paquette joins the show. Patrick, how are you? Absolutely, Greg. How are you doing? I'm, I, I don't know how I'm doing. I'm flabbergasted. This, this story that you're telling, yes. this is not the first time. In Florida or in general? In general. Where and is this going on? Can I give you an urban legend? Yes. So there's a, there's a suburb outside of Boston um, called Medford, Massachusetts. Actually, Medford and Malden are two towns that are sort of you can't tell which one where one begins and the other ends. Certainly. But so there's this suburb years ago. There's a couple of buddies who were barbecuing a lot in the, in the backyard. And in, the, in this particular town, it's a suburb, but there's not a lot of space here in the East Coast. So the, the yards are close together. And the neighbor was always complaining about the smoke from them barbecuing next door. To the point that the, that the, that the, the neighbor would get upset and would always come out in his back deck and yell, the words, I smell smoke <laughs> at his neighbors that were cooking. So I don't know if you can figure out where this goes, but those two guys were a couple of guys by the name of Charlie Peeney and Steve Farron. And they end up forming the barbecue team and made a pretty decent run for a lot of years called I Smell Smoke. That's right. But the I Smell Smoke barbecue team was named after wow. a neighbor yelling at guys over smoke drifting from yard to yard. Unbelievable. I mean, is it something... Um, it, it can only go to the highest levels, which is basically the government shutting down the manufacturing of all grills and smokers because at some point you can't contain stuff that gets into the air, right? I mean, am I, am I crazy about that? Oh, not at all. It, it, this is... This is, this is, this is just another sign of the nation we live in. Is the world ending? Not the world, but here in the United States it is. I guess. I mean, if uh, I, I, I could... Tolerance, tolerance and freedom are, are concepts lost on the lazy, average American person these days. Well, I think uh, the, the, the whoever is calling in on that guy in Florida, obviously, is uh, fat and cannot do their own barbecue... And they're jealous bastards. Patrick, thank you for calling in. I appreciate it, my friend. 
All right, uh, Matthew is calling back. He's a uh, embedded Florida correspondent. Matthew, go ahead. Hey, I just want to check in real quick. I yeah. just wanted to make sure you got some more of the facts in this whole story. Yes. That woman has been harassing these guys nonstop. It's a neighbor dispute. And the poor environmentalist was just caught on the wind. He was stupid for what doing he did. But he has been rebuked. The entire area has come back on this, and they're backing off, and there is no retribution against no person in Florida, especially where he's at, because Tampa is really close to the IPC. And Chad Ward will shut it down in a heartbeat out there if it comes down to that. He'll, he'll shut down the IPC? No, he'll shut down the environmentalist. Oh, like he'll take care of them. What are you saying? Look, Chad look Ward Chad, is for hire. Are you saying Chad Ward is for hire? Are you saying that Chad Ward is for hire? Uh, look at the environmentalist. Look at Chad. Who do you think is going to win this fight? Oh, boy. Yeah, I don't, I don't need to answer that question. If you can't tell on your own eyes, I think we both understand what we're saying. All right. It, think- was, it was a person who was harassing them. It was a harassment by between neighbors. It went viral because of different issues, and they answered the wrong way. The person answered the wrong way. It was really sorry. It got blown up, and I, I just... I really hope people understand that Florida loves barbecue. Oh, right. <laughs> you know. Thank you, Matt, for uh, clearing up the fact that Florida does love barbecue. I think we all know. Chad Ward is a hitman in IPC, by the way. So if you uh, need to bump somebody off, uh, get a hold of Chad Ward. He is the host of Whiskey Bend Barbecue in the Pit that precedes this show. You can work out a price, and uh, he will make sure that things are handled, Uh-oh. evidently, out there in the IPC. However... You may think that that is being, uh, that that was just something that was blown out of proportion. However, I have read and have it on good authority that in Austin, Texas, there is legislation being drawn up, and if passed, a number of well established barbecue restaurants to include the number one barbecue restaurant in the country, Franklin's Barbecue, will have to move. Assuming this legislation passes, they will have to put very extensive and expensive smoke diffusers to uh, comply with whatever the you know EPA regulation. I mean, whatever. I mean, can you believe this? People are bitching and moaning about anything and everything on the face of the earth these days. I'm quite frankly offended as an American citizen, as a U.S. American. I am flabbergasted that this even hits the news. You have the best barbecue in the world. You're going to cause those people to beat it because you can't handle the smoke. Shut the fuck up. Gang, if you're like me, you've been thinking about ways to step up the barbecue and grilling game. Let me tell you the easiest way. ButcherBarbecue.com. That's right. Pork injection, beef injection, prime injection, bird booster, the open pit flavored pork injection. Oh, it's great. ButcherBBQ.com has all of the products that you're looking for. The go-to rubs and sauces. The full line of award-winning rubs. That's right, the steak and the brisket rub, the honey rub, the premium rub. Here's a hint. Use the premium rub if you inject with butchers. It's formulated to work with that injection. A perfect one-two punch to impress judges. If you're looking for sauce, you know what I say each and every week. Butcher's Barbecue Sweet Sauce is fabulous. When it comes to the sweet sauce, I'm as picky as I get. Butcher's Barbecue wins in every category for me. Not overly sweet. Nice slice of tang. The right amount of back-end heat. No liquid smoke, which I appreciate. Because, look, Dave took the time and effort to make the quality sauce and didn't take the easy way out by adding that devil's urine, better known as liquid smoke. Grab a box of six. It's going to go fast. Don't worry about breaking the bank when it comes to shipping either, for crying out loud. Items totaling up to $55 ship for $8.50. Between $55 and $200 ship for $9.75. Anything over $200 ships for free. I give you the same advice each and every week. Do yourself a favor and buy at least $201 worth of stuff because it ships for free. Save on the shipping cost. Come on. It's like if you're going to be buying from iGrill or Mangrate, use the promo codes, buy extra because you're saving. Same thing with Dave's free shipping. And if you've bought somebody else's commercial injection, if you think it sucks, 
Instead of just throwing it out, go to ButcherBBQ.com, go to the trade-in link, print the label off, send it over to Dave, tell him what you would like of his product in replacement. He's going to send you that amount back of bird booster or prime injection or beef injection or pork injection, all that good stuff. It works. He's the man. Head on over to ButcherBBQ.com. Stock up right now. ButcherBBQ.com. Always trust your butcher. We're back to wrap it up right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampy. All right. Thank you for uh, coming back with me here as we uh, get ready to wrap it up here, which we're going to do uh, expeditiously. All the way back in the first hour, we talked with Peter Gabriel from iGrill. Don't forget, you can use promo code BBQ Central. Sorry, Central. Only Central for 15% off your order. iDevicesInc.com. Then we talked with Stan Hayes from Operation Barbecue Relief, OperationBBQRelief.org, if you want to make a donation there or sign up. When we have more information from Stan, we'll make sure we get that to you as well for signing up for that monthly installment so they can count on some stuff coming in each and every month from the people that support Operation Barbecue Relief. And then at 1014, we talked with Jay Curry from Spice Wine Cookers, SpiceWineIronWorks.com, his website. We wrapped it up talking about insane but real barbecue news stories because people are complaining about smoke and the smelling of barbecue in their very neighborhoods, and evidently it's quite a problem. September 11th, 2001, I will never forget until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.